Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Susanna, Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Connard. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so glad that you're connected with us online and here in the Worship Center. If it's your first time here, we want to give you a special welcome and invite you to get connected in other ways that you can connect with community and grow in your connection with God. One of the best ways to do that is to sign up for our weekly email newsletter. You can go to our website at swumc.org. Share your name and contact information, and we'll send out an uh, email every Friday um, with information about upcoming events in the life of the church. We also want to take a moment here this morning for those that are here in the worship center to be able to greet those around you, to welcome your neighbors, to introduce yourself, get to know someone, or remember someone's name um, that you may have forgotten. Um, and then we'll uh, continue standing in our responsive welcome, the Susanna Wesley welcome. So will you please stand and welcome your neighbors this morning? Good morning. Good morning. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. We are Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. We build, we build diverse, diverse Christian, Christian communities, communities where God's love is in action. We seek to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. We connect, connect with, with God and, and our neighbors through spiritual practices to worship, study, serve, give, and share. All people are welcome with no exceptions. You can be who you are, you can be any way you are, and you are loved. God speaks to us through words and music. I invite you to continue standing and join in singing our opening song. Which are 
Will you please be seated? And as you're seated, I invite you to join with me as we go to God in prayer. Will you pray with me? We hear your calling, O Lord. How can we keep from singing? How can we keep our lips from proclaiming the good news that Jesus Christ is risen, bringing healing and forgiveness to all? Christ has freed us for life, making us a royal priesthood. Whether we have seen or believed without noticing, we have found life in his name. In Christ's name, we give thanks and praise. Amen. Listen to God's word for us from the New Testament, a reading from Acts chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. The apostles were brought before the council where the high priest confronted them. In no uncertain terms, we demanded that you not teach in this name. And look at you. You have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. and You are determined to hold us responsible for this man's death. Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than humans. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God has exalted Jesus to his right side as leader and savior so that he can enable Israel to change its heart and life and to find forgiveness for sins. We are witnesses of such things as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. I invite you now to listen to the words of the Psalms uh, today from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his fortress, the sky. Praise God in his mighty acts. Praise God as suits his incredible greatness. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise God with lute and lyre. Praise God with drum and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with loud cymbals. Praise God with clashing cymbals. Let every living thing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to God's word from us from the New Testament, a reading from Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, Grace and peace to you from the one who is and was and is coming, and from the seven spirits that are before God's throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to the one who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, who made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and power, forever and always. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, including those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. This is so. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God Almighty, the one who is and was and is coming, the Almighty. Will you please stand as you're able to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Listen for God's word for us. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. And the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my fingers in the wounds left by the nails and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here. Look at my hands, put your hands into my side. No more disbelief, believe. 
Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll, but these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding the scripture. You may be seated. Today, we are in the second week of our series, We Are Witnesses, as we continue in the season of Easter. Witnessing Jesus' resurrection means both seeing and understanding and telling and living in response, receiving God's love for ourselves and sharing God's love with the world. We consider the impact of the Easter story, not just last week, but in the days ahead for those who first witnessed the resurrection and for us today and each day. Last week, we celebrated Easter through the eyes of Mary, who was the first witness, according to one account, of Jesus' resurrection. Jesus is the one who died, lives, and we can follow him today. Today, we begin this journey along through the book of Acts, in which we're journeying with those early disciples, those early witnesses of the early church. And we're considering how we live as a congregation, as a community of faith in the new reality that Easter brings. We have the opportunity to make a commitment to being witnesses of and for and as a part of God's kingdom. We begin our journey with the very first witnesses to Jesus' resurrection in Acts chapter 5. Peter and a group of leaders in the early church are brought before the religious council and confronted by the high priest. Now, we don't know much about what has gone on before, but we know from the text that this isn't their first encounter. And can you imagine the frustration of the high priest? I've already told you not to talk about Jesus, but did you listen? No, you're filling the city with your teaching. Have you ever found yourself in that situation uh, with someone that just won't listen to what you're trying to say, just won't pay attention to what you're trying to get across? The high priest is frustrated and threatened. For you see, these early Christian leaders haven't been listening to the religious council. They haven't been listening to the religious leaders. Instead, they have been following Jesus. And in the gospel reading from John for today, we hear what Jesus told them to do. Hear these words again from John chapter 20, verses 20 and 22. After he said this, this is Jesus, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. And Jesus said to them, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. For you see, the resurrected Jesus shows the disciples the marks from the cross on his body, on his hands and his side. He offers them peace, and he sends them to go out into the world to continue the work that he has begun and offers them the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is what the disciples are doing. They are taking this word from Jesus, the words of peace, the words of power in the Holy Spirit, and they are going to continue the work that Jesus has done, proclaiming the kingdom and living into it as a part of God's kingdom coming on earth. And Jesus' instructions takes precedence over that whatever guidance from the high priest. Now, if there is a conflict between instructions and invitations from Jesus and those of a religious leader, you should always follow Jesus. And this is part of what I love about being a United Methodist. We invite you to a faith that seeks understanding. I do my best to preach and teach in reliable ways that help inspire and encourage and convict you to take actions that make your life more like Jesus. However, I may not get it right all the time. And on some things, we might disagree. There's any number of issues on which faithful Christians will disagree, and that's okay. I don't want you to check your brain when you tune, tune into the live stream or when you walk in here to the worship center. I want you to pay attention and, uh, and ask questions. You don't have to hold them to yourself. I hope you'll listen. I hope you'll search the scriptures independently because following Jesus is more important than following your pastor. Well, let's get back to the story of Acts. The high priest tries to get the early Christian leaders to keep the status quo in Jerusalem. There had been a particular way that those that were in power at the time understood that God was at work in the world, and Jesus had upended it. And these early followers of Jesus, as they have experienced him in the resurrection, they were continuing to teach things that they didn't understand that represented a great deal of change from what had gone before. They were preaching and teaching about Jesus. Not only that, but that he had been raised from the dead. 
Peter is, is having none of it, uh, these words from the council to, to stop doing what he's doing. Peter and the apostles replied here in Acts 29, verse 29, we must obey God rather than humans. We must obey God rather than humans. He shares a few more sentences in response. And then just past the reading for today, we hear the response from the council in Acts 5, 33. When the council members heard this, they became furious and wanted to kill the apostles. Are you kidding me? Is this such a threat to the, the way things are or the power as they understood it or these particular council members that they wanted to put the disciples to death? There's got to be some reason in the story, doesn't it, to explain this, this kind of response? There must be some rational reason behind this anger and frustration against this new movement on the verge of becoming a church. Surely there is, isn't there? But it doesn't seem like there is. Not a rational one, anyway. And that's perhaps just the point. This whole event defies easy explanation. The closest we might get is acknowledging that the powers that be don't like change and that Easter is unsettling. Peter declares in his defense, we are witnesses. We are witnesses. The religious leaders told them that he wasn't supposed to teach in the name of Jesus and he did it anyway. So what was his defense? We are witnesses. Is that sufficient? Is that enough? He says, we saw something and we have to talk about it. We participated in something and we can't help but share that news with others. He says that we became something and there is nothing that we can do but be proclaimers of this word, of this good news about Jesus. It's like maybe when you try a new restaurant and, you hear, and the food is so good that you have to tell someone about it and you have to share the news that you should go and check it out for yourself. It's that thing that you just can't help but share. And this is the case for Jesus and, and his impact on Peter and the disciples. They have to share this news. And we are witnesses does not simply mean that they just tell what they saw or what happened to them. It also means that they have become something more. They have been changed. They have been transformed in their identity, and they have to live out of that reality each day. They witness that which defines their lives in a new and profound way with every word and encounter in action. It's not just telling the story. Their lives have been changed. You can almost picture Peter's confusion as they challenge him on this point. It's, it's like they're telling him, well, you, Peter, you just have to stop breathing or, or stop being Peter. It, it's just not going to happen. He's so clear about this transformation that's happened in his life. He can't help but live this way. As if his simple statement explains it all. What we, we are witnesses. This is who we are. We are witnesses. This is our life's purpose, the meaning of our existence. It is what we do, what we will do, despite the challenges that might be thrown in front of us. <laughs> Get used to it. Okay, so Peter doesn't exactly say get used to it to uh, the high priest there, but uh, maybe it's implied in his simple statement, we are witnesses. And the thing is, it seems simple, but, but maybe it isn't all that simple. And perhaps it's the opposite of simple, as Peter himself will discover as he continues to walk this path, as we are finding out, as we seek to be made disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, there's nothing simple about it. Or, or maybe better to say there's nothing easy about it. It is simple to say we are witnesses. Still, it is not easy living every day representing the one you proclaim with your words, living a life of hospitality and invitation, living a life geared towards reconciliation and grace. No, it isn't easy. But there's one more thing in this text. We don't have to be witnesses on our own. We see this in Acts 5.32. We are witnesses of such things, Peter says, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. This changes everything. If we focus on the first part of the declaration, we make it sound like it's all up to us, that we have to make ourselves into the witnesses, into the disciples that we're trying to be, knowing that we're going to be lousy at it. We're going to mess up, up with it. But we keep trying and we keep failing and keep trying. And then maybe after years of effort, we might be inching closer to the goal. But this isn't the message here. That's not the end of the story. Because the good news is that God's action through the power of the Holy Spirit makes us who we are and whom we are called to be with God's help. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be witnesses. So the pressure's off then, right? It's all the Holy Spirit's work. I just get to follow along. Well, not really that either. 
For you see, there is still pressure, but it is positive pressure, a desire or a passion perhaps to be a witness to the good news of Jesus Christ. It's a privilege to live a life of pointing toward the kingdom of God, of being a one of God's citizens. There's a both and quality of this task we undertake or this new identity we claim. There's an effort on our part, work to be done, a harvest to gather. We are witnesses. But there is also the support and the strengthening and the equipping that comes from the Holy Spirit. There is the divine presence with us always and is most often experienced in the community of faith, in a congregation of those that are continuing to try to be faithful, even though we make mistakes over and over. We're here for one another. The community of faith that gives us the ability to continue the journey in all of its ups and downs. Declaring with Peter that we are witnesses may be an identity statement, but it is also an action statement. To be a witness is to recognize that the kingdom looks different from what we see around us today. There are gaps between reality and what God would have in mind for us. And we can join the effort to move us closer to what God intends for all of us to be here in Topeka and Shawnee County. So when someone asks you, well, why do you have faith? Why do you plan on Sunday mornings to connect with worship in some way? What will you say and and how will you say it? Peter suggests that we start with this simple declaration. We are witnesses. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we confess that that following you is, is simple but not easy. We hope and we aspire to live as your followers and yet we consistently make mistakes. So God, open us again to the power of your Holy Spirit. Breathe on us. Give us peace. Give us strength and empower us to follow you. We offer our lives at this congregation that you might use it to be part of your work of your kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. In your holy name we pray, amen. In our hymn this morning, we have the opportunity to respond as witnesses to the resurrection. I invite you to stand as we sing hymn number 304, Easter people, raise your voices. You may be seated. As you're seated today, I want to draw your attention to some upcoming events and opportunities you have before you here connected with Susanna Wesley. And one of those is if you're here in the worship center today, we'd invite you to greet uh, Becca Nyman. She's our next generation program director, is here on Sunday mornings today, uh, responsible for both our KDHE licensed school age program before and after school and summer camp, as well as our efforts on Sunday mornings and throughout the week to equip children and families to grow in their faith together. I hope you have a chance to say hello to Becca sometime today or in the days ahead. Also, we want to invite you to next week, a strategic planning session hosted by our church council. We are working with the consultant, Marsha Sheehan, to uh, begin to uh, consider again to revisit our vision, where we're going as a congregation, and develop some plans for action as we continue to move into what God has in mind for us next. 
There's uh, some documents that you can do to prepare, including our founding vision statement, uh, so this document that was created when Susanna was Wesley was founded um, over 35 years ago. You can pick up a copy today um, in the office, or you can download all of those documents at our, uh, at our website. We invite you to take some time to review those and then plan to be here next Sunday afternoon and early evening um, as we share in this conversation together and begin to make plans for the days ahead. We also invite you to an opportunity to connect in this season of Easter through what we call our Forks and Fellowship. These are social groups designed to help build a community with one another. Um, they are put together um, seasonally throughout the life of our church, and it's a chance to share a meal together and get to know some folks that you may not know very well. You can sign up today at our website. You can share what days you're interested in being part of a group, and then we'll put those groups together for a kickoff event on May 17th. We hope you'll take some time to sign up uh, in the days ahead for our Forks and Fellowship. On Monday, May 9th, we invite you to our Nehemiah Action. This is a part of our work as a uh, community of faith to seek justice and to act towards justice in Shawnee County. We are part of uh, the Topeka Jump organization with other congregations across Shawnee County, and this is the, the highlight, the premier event of the year, and we invite you to be a part of it at, uh, in Lee Arena there at the Washburn University campus on Monday, uh, May 9th. We also want to invite you to be a part of uh, just growing as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, we talk about our opportunities to worship, study, serve, give, and share. And today I want to remind you about the opportunity to serve, to be a part of the hands and feet of Jesus in the world together by making a difference in the world around us. We invite you to serve on your own by doing five acts of kindness every day. A simple thing like holding the door for someone perhaps, but an act of kindness towards someone else. And then to serve with others in an opportunity with Susanna Wesley at least once a year. We have a number of opportunities over the course of the year that you might be a part of to help make a difference in our community, to take that we are witnesses into action. We come now to the time in our service in which we offer prayers of the people. During this time of prayer, you are welcome to uh, be in an attitude of prayer with your eyes open, as you'll see um, on the screens, names of individuals and families that we're keeping in our prayers for a variety of reasons. Perhaps you would like to close your eyes to focus on the way that God is speaking to you and to, to offer your own prayers to God. We'll begin with the time of quiet to make space for you to do just that. You might come forward and light a candle as a sign of your prayers or a, in remembrance of someone, perhaps, or a sign of hope for something in the future as, an, as a tangible sign of your prayers. And as we conclude our prayer together, I'll guide us together in a word of prayer as a congregation. So whether your eyes are open or closed, whether you come forward to light a candle or stay where you are, we'll begin with quiet and conclude together. So I invite you to be in a spirit and an attitude of prayer. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you are good, and you are loving, and you are love. And there is so much to witness because of your glory and your mercy, your justice and peace. God, we confess that there are times when we aren't witnesses, but instead that we turn away from you. By our actions or by our words, we make mistakes, and God, we need your forgiveness. So we ask that you would receive our prayers of confession in this time of quiet. Forgive us, we pray. Wash us clean and make us new. Encourage and inspire us to be a part of your kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven. 
Oh God, we give you thanks for the way that you're at work bringing healing and hope in our lives and for those of our neighbors and friends. We ask that you would continue to encourage us, to fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we might be actors of peace, that we might be part of your justice, and that we might encourage others as we seek to follow you in our everyday lives. Fill us, lead us, guide us, we pray. All of this in your holy name. Amen. We'd love to invite you to let us know that you were here today to check in to worship, and there's a variety of ways to do that. If it's your first time here, you can share your contact information with the form at our website. You can use the Connect card in the pew in front of you if you're here in the worship center. Uh, and if you're online or in person, then you can use the Church Center app to uh, check in, let us know that you're connected once you've had the chance to download that app. You can also, if you're here in the worship center, you can sign your name at the table out on the atrium as well. And while you're there in the Church Center app, we also invite you to consider making a financial gift to be a part of God's work through our church. When you give to support our ministry funding plan, you help us to put God's love in action every day. And you can do that by texting any dollar amount to 84321. You can use the Church Center app. You can mail in a check to the church or drop it off in the basket here in the Worship Center today. And no matter how you give, thank you for being a part of God's work through Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. As you take a moment to check in and consider an offering in the life of the church, I invite you to listen to the words and music of our offertory today, Easter. I invite you to join in the prayer of thanksgiving as you'll find the words on the screen. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, you are the source of every blessing. We behold your glory in the skies and touch your mystery all around us. Our doubts give way to deep and abiding joy in the beauty of our awakening. In gratitude for your many mercies, we offer you these gifts and offerings that may be signs of our commitment to live as your faithful disciples. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you're able for our closing song today, Christ is Alive. now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.